So before we get to the football stuff, yeah. um, Twitter actually announced today that they are going to allow players to monetize their highlights right. um, pretty directly. And I know you've kind of done some research, you've worked on a lot of this stuff in a bigger picture sense. Where do you see things going in terms of NIL and kind of where do you think it should go? Yeah, I mean, I think when you see a company and a brand like Twitter starting to enter the NIL space, it becomes even more real than it already is. And I think players will continue to try to exploit, or not exploit, take advantage of um, any opportunity they can within NIL. And I think Twitter kind of getting into that is a, is a really good sign that things will continue to kind of develop and move forward for the athletes. And I think that's the biggest thing that they do at the end of the day, that the players see compensation for the work that they've put in. So I think it's awesome. I think it's a great kind of step forward for, for the players as a whole. So, yeah. Austin Jones was saying that he definitely appreciated the opportunity to monetize and right. the players should have that opportunity, right. but that he also felt there should be barriers there should be a difference between professional football players and amateurs right. and just where do you come out on that in terms of how far should it go how, how how much are the players entitled to in your mind yeah i mean austin's obviously a stanford kid so <laughs> um, i tend to agree with him on a lot of stuff and i think i agree with him in this sense i think players were restricted so much from being able to capitalize on their name, image, and likeness, or however you want to phrase it, um, within college football and college sports as a whole, that once it became legal, it kind of blew up exponentially. And I think we're seeing things that nobody necessarily anticipated, but I mean, you don't know what's true and what's not, but like high, high school kids getting millions of dollars and whatever is, how appropriate or not appropriate that may or, not, may, or may not be is kind of up for you to decide. But, um, I think there will be some regulation on it at some point, and I do think there should be a distinction between college and pro sports, but I do think that it's a very positive thing at the end of the day that players in college are seeing compensation. I mean, fundamentally, you know, the reason these billion dollar TV contracts are handed out right. is because you guys are playing on Saturdays. Right, no, absolutely. Um, no, I agree. I think as players, we bring in a ton of revenue for the school. Um, we work extremely hard um, while being full-time students. So if you're up at 5 and you lift and run for two hours and go to your 8 a.m. class to take a test, the kid next to you woke up at 7.30 and went to sleep at 11 having pizza with his girlfriend, whereas you're watching film and going to practice and stuff like that. So it is a very different lifestyle, and I think sometimes that's lost on kind of everyday students. Um, so like I said, I think it's well deserved that players finally get some, some compensation for the work that they're doing because they promote their schools, they promote their brands, and they bring in tons of revenue. <laughs> Obviously, Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, your head coach, Caleb Williams came on over. I'm sure you can't talk about all the details, but can right. you talk about the conversation you had with Lincoln and the vision he has for you? In terms of when he came in or, yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't know Coach Riley very well when he came in um, and the few conversations that I had with him when he arrived on campus were very positive. Um, obviously, in order to form a full opinion on someone, you need a certain amount of time building a relationship with them and working with them. And I think the conversations we had at spring, at the end of spring were much more meaningful because we had time to accumulate like that relationship and work together. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't like speak on private conversations with me and Coach Riley, but my relationship with him has been super positive. And I think me and Caleb have a mutual understanding that within, like, as long as we have a positive relationship, it only benefits the team. So, um, yeah, I have super positive relationships with both of them. Kyle Ford kind of talked about with him and Chiron having kind of a similar experience of yeah. a high profile recruit who came in, had kind of a rocky road and has watched right. kind of other names show up. Definitely. Um, and that's that's been a positive motivator. That's been like a healthy chip on the shoulder. Is there any aspect of that that kind of is motivating you at this point? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I talked to a trial. I was like, look, you brought in probably the best kid you could bring in in the country um, that was available out there um, to be in our room and I think it's only made me better and obviously like we learned from each other I, Caleb's played a year in the offense so that definitely helps um, to see someone operate that's been around the system and been around Coach Riley and worked with him um, but yeah absolutely it puts a chip on your shoulder and 
definitely drives you to continue to work. And when you look at your spring film, what were the biggest takeaways in terms of where you want to get better over this next camp? Um, I think there was a big difference just in my foot in, in my first step. Um, from practice one to practice 15, I want to kind of continue to hone in on that, obviously continue to become more and more comfortable within the offense. Um, there's always, you can always work on everything, you know, so just become a more complete player, more complete quarterback, and continue to kind of build with this team. How's the team been able to get to know each other so well when there's 50 plus new faces? Yeah, I mean, Coach Riley says it all the time. It's the most unique roster in college football history, um, which I somewhat agree with. It's very NFL-esque in that you have so much turnover. I mean, I think you have 30 guys leave. Or I don't know if it's 50 or whatever it may be. Um, and one thing that he's continually emphasized to us, and I think he's done a really good job um, of doing so, is that the way we come together will determine how successful or not successful we've been. Um, and we're around each other 24-7, so that definitely helps. But I also think he did a great job in bringing together like-minded people. Um, and that definitely helps. We all have a mutual understanding that we're here for the same goal. We're here to win. Um, and we're here to bring this program back to what it's supposed to be. So I think that definitely helps. And part of that definitely still remains to be seen. So Lincoln's shown a willingness to change quarterbacks in games, in seasons. How has he communicated to you the need to uh, to stay sharp, to be ready to, because, you know, things can happen. And, you know, even though Caleb might take the first snap tomorrow, you know, there's no guarantees that, you know, you're not taking the first snap on September 3rd. Yeah. Um... I don't think that pertains so much to Coach Riley as it does to just playing football and playing quarterback. Um, I think Coach Riley is going to do what he sees fit to win the game. At the end of the day, it's one thing I've noticed that really stands out to me about him is that he's going to do whatever it takes to win. That's his objective at the end of the day. It's not to please anybody. It's not to do anything like that. It's to win games. So, um, as a football player, not as <laughs> Coach Riley, but just as a football player, as a quarterback. I mean, I have to remain ready for my shot whenever it does come. And I told him that. I told him, look, whenever my shot comes, I'm going to be ready. And I'm going to go out there and win you football games. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's just kind of the attitude you have to have in my position, regardless who the head coach is. Have you seen the team benefit from the way he's communicated that, maybe in your situation specifically, but maybe just across the team, that that is the way it is and that's kind of the best way for it to be? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, like posed with that situation, you can do one of two things. You can say, you know what, I'm going to make the most of my situation and be ready when my opportunity comes. Or you can say, I'm out of here, which is now much easier to do than it previously was. Um, and I think the majority of guys have risen to that challenge. And I think Without a doubt, credit to Coach Riley and Coach Wiley, our strength coach, who um, has a, had a very, very positive impact on, on the program as a whole. So I think credit to those two guys for sure. What have you seen from Jordan during the summer in these throwing sessions? Yeah, I mean, they don't hand out balloon across for no reason, you know. <laughs> um, no, he's, he's a really great player. You would never know that he has the status, so to speak, that he does just from talking to him. He's a very down-to-earth kid. He's about his work, and he said something the first day I met him, just keep the main thing the main thing, which I kind of like that. <laughs> um, yeah, he's come in, he's worked, he's bought into kind of the culture and everything we're building here, and obviously he can catch passes with the best in the world, so um, yeah, I mean, he's fast, he can run routes, he's great hands. It's interesting, like playing with Drake last year and then him this year. It's be around a lot of special receivers around this place, so that's been awesome. Do you think their playing styles are similar or different? Or what's They're very different receivers, for sure. Um, I'd say Jordan's more of a Calvin Ridley kind of guy. I think Drake kind of defies categorization just because of how big he is, and even when he's covered, like he's not really covered. So. <laughs> Um, they're both super special receivers in different ways, but yeah. Is that a you ever tell Jordan that Drake would have won the award and he stayed healthy? No, I stay, I stay out of <laughs> I stay out of any kind of speculations like that. How do you, how do you define the wideout? 
define it as as a whole. Yeah, it seems like it's such variance in the yeah. skill set that you've thrown to these guys all off season. I think it'd be difficult to define it in one word, but if I were to choose one, it'd just be competitive. I think, kind of like you said, there's so many different skill sets um, from guys who can go up and get balls, guys who can run after the catch, possession receivers, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's very competitive, and I think it's also a super positive environment in that they all, when you have that many different skill sets, guys can all learn from one another. So um, collaborative might be another one. Um, compete to strive together. So. Um, yeah, I think it's a super positive room. They're all kind of learning with each other and making one another better. So. You know, everybody's kind of said positive environment in some fashion today. Yeah. That you talk to. So what do you think it, it's been to allow you all to gel so quickly? That's a good question. Um, I kind of touched on it before, but I mean, obviously in the off season, aside from the five weeks of spring ball, but since January, we've spent the majority of our time in the weight room. Um, and running and lifting weights. And I think Coach Wiley honestly deserves a ton of credit for that. Um, the the kind of attitude and effort that he brings to the table every single day. I mean, it's very rare that you have someone on staff that every single person across the board loves and enjoys working with. And I think that's without a doubt the case for him. Um, and I think he's done a really, really phenomenal job in building culture and changing a lot of dudes' kind of outlook on how they approach their work, how they approach their career as a whole. So I give them a ton of credit. Yeah, I think like you can come into this program easily and be like, all right, I'm going to go get mine and then bring it out. Right, right. And it's a very individualistic thought. Definitely. Would you say that like, you don't have to comment if it was or wasn't that before, but now it, does it seem like it's a, a collective thought? I mean, I think guys definitely still have their own career path in the back of their mind. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's your life and you need to do what's best for you. But I do think that guys will get, guys will be more successful in their own right if the team is successful. And I think they've come to realize that. I mean, Georgia had 15 players drafted or something, something ridiculous and they won the national championship. So I think there has been a mutual understanding among the team that if we win games, it'll benefit every single one, every single person on the team. It's a greater understanding than ever before. You know, definitely. No, I agree. I mean, I think there were definitely... There's a, there's a big contrast between the year before and the year. You may or may not be around when it happens, but what were your thoughts when you first USC joining the Big yeah, um, at first I was like, no way. It was similar to when Coach Riley got the job. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> and then um, then it ended up being true. So um, I'm excited. I mean, I think um, obviously the university did what they felt was best for, for the program and all that kind of stuff. But I'm excited to kind of renew some old rivalries and stuff like that. I mean, I grew up watching Ohio State, Michigan play SC, so I think it'll be awesome to, to be in those environments again. Um, being super positive for obviously the football team and for the whole athletic, athletic program. Would it be strange if you guys aren't playing Cal and Stanford every year? Yeah, I mean, it would definitely be strange. <laughs> um, but I mean, strange that I mean there's a lot of strange things going on in the college football landscape right now so beyond college football it's right a strange yeah, world the last few years <laughs> definitely <laughs> um that's very true so yeah I mean it would be strange I hope that we kind of keep those rivalries around in some sense I can't really like speak or speculate what that's going to look like but I mean I hope we still get to play Oregon and Stanford and Utah and those guys and hopefully they'll shake out in that way so you joined a class that had a quarterback at USC yes. as a recruit. You stayed through a decommitment and an addition of another quarterback, yes. and you have stayed through the addition of a transfer portal quarterback. Just talk about the conviction you've had about wanting to be here and just the other part of it just being your willingness to compete because as you've noted, it's a lot easier for guys to move and you have stayed repeatedly. Yeah, um, I mean, I think it's very rare that I sit back and think of it in that sense where it was this guy, then this guy, then this guy. I saw those all as individual decisions and decisions that I was willing to make based on 
the information I had at the time. Um, like I've said before, I love USC. I love being here. Um, I love the school. I love my friends, I love my teammates, and Coach Ryan has been phenomenal so far. So um, I have every belief in myself that I can make it work here, um, and I'm going to see that through until I can anymore. So. Has Lincoln surprised you in any sort of way? Are there any, any ways that he's kind of been that maybe you didn't expect him? I would just say like his creativity as a play caller for sure. Um, that has really, really surprised me. That's, that was definitely the biggest thing. Nice.